So after beating Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal, you decided, I'm addicted to Persona, and for some reason, you want to play Persona 4 or Persona 4 Golden. And you're looking for some tips and tricks to get into the game, or maybe a recap on Persona. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've come to the right place here. I'm going to lay down some tips and tricks for Persona 4 Golden. Whether you're going to play it on PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV for Persona 4 Golden. PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 for Persona 4. You've come to the right place. Or whether you're deciding to eventually get into Persona 3, which I'll eventually do a tips and tricks video for that game as well. You're on the right channel. So let's get into it here. So we're going to start off a little bit about the story here of Persona 4 Golden. And this is probably the story of Persona 4 too. Because Persona 4 Golden is essentially an enhanced port of Persona 4 for the PlayStation Vita. So it looks a lot sharper, a lot nicer. You have new social links. You have new story events, new animated cutscenes. So if you've never played Persona 4 or Persona 4 Golden, you obviously need to play Golden because it looks better, it plays better, there's a lot of quality of life improvements with the combat system. Trust me, it's a lot better balanced system. So essentially what's happening here is you're coming from the big city to live with your uncle Dojima and your niece Nanako in the Dojima residence in Inaba which is kind of a country town in the middle of nowhere. And you're going to be living there for a year, just like all the other Persona games. It's a year calendar. So you decide to go to high school, everything's cool, you decide to live your normal life, and then boom, you hear about this rumor about the Midnight Channel. Everybody's talking about it. Rumor is, at midnight, you will see somebody on the TV screen. And sure enough, you and your friends are watching the Midnight Channel, and somebody appears, and next minute you know, you're at Juness, which is a department store, where you're going to be meeting more of your teammates there too. You go into the TV world with Yosuke. Essentially what happens, what happens in every dungeon in the game, is you go through multiple levels fighting shadows until you get to the top of the dungeon and then you have to fight the shadow well in the first dungeon you don't really go through to the top of the dungeon you just go straight to the boss and essentially what happens is the shadow is saying exactly what the real person is thinking and how they feel but the real person does not want to admit to their shadow to their dark side and whenever you defeat the shadow your teammate pretty much confesses that yeah the shadow is right and if you say the shadow isn't right then obviously you're gonna have to fight the shadow which happens every single time the way the game works is there's an investigation. You're trying to figure out who the shadow is. You're trying to figure out where they are in the TV world. You watch the shadow appear on the TV. You go into the TV world. You go to the top of the TV world dungeon. You have to face the shadow, which is the boss. Then your teammate is saved or whoever's inside the TV world that's in trouble. And then boom, everything's all hunky-dory. Well, of course, before all that happens, obviously there are two people that died and nobody knows what happened. Nobody knows what's up with the Inaba murder mystery at all. And of course, you're there to solve it. You have a year to solve it. So don't screw this up. And obviously, if you take too much time and you don't go into the TV world, then your teammate will die and you'll get a bad ending and then the game's like nope you gotta go back 10 days retry this it's it's kind of like persona 5 but the dungeons are more like mementos if you've played persona 5 where the enemies and the layouts and the treasures are completely random so if you go in a floor and out of a floor the layout's going to be random every single time and the enemies will reappear so obviously yeah if you're going to go down the, the dungeon floors it's not worth it to go down to the save point to the dungeon floors you need to be prepared before you even get into the dungeon whatsoever like any persona game so persona 4 golden just like persona 4 and persona 5 
has a combat system where it's based off of weakness and strength and resistance. So what you need to be doing is you need to have all the different elements in your party with different personas that you have or your party members, which their personas can't change. Your persona, just like Persona 5, you're the trickster, which means you have the ability to collect multiple personas, persona fusions to make new personas, get rid of personas, and so on. And you need to make sure that you have an entire collection of different personas for different enemies because you want to be able to hit every single enemy's weakness. So what you're doing is throwing different spells at your enemies. Fire, lightning, ice, light and darkness, wind, physical attacks. What you're trying to essentially do is figure out their weakness because if you get all the weaknesses for the personas that you're fighting, then you can go in for what's called a all-out attack. And that should be your goal, ultimately. It gets all your teammates together, and obviously the enemies are down after you stun them. And you pretty much destroy them. And most of the time, they're defeated. So yeah, you need to be doing that, obviously. In this Persona game, there is no negotiations like Persona 5. But after battle, obviously, you level up, you get money, you get items. You have what's called Shuffle Time which is super 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 important which what you need to do in shuffle time is obviously there are cards that allow you more than one card like they'll say stuff like no items three more are half experience two more for example and you want to activate them or they could end shuffle time which you don't want to end shuffle time and your goal ultimately is to get it where you do a sweet a sweet bonus where there are no cards left over at all and what happens there is the next battle you'll have another shuffle time bonus round instead of having to hope and wait for a shuffle time after you win your next battle it'll automatically be there and with shuffle time you can restore hp you can get more money get more experience get more personas get chest keys which i would shoot for you can also get what's called a skill up card well which will take like a normal skill like attack up for one party member well it could do attack up for the entire team for three turns instead of just one party member for three turns which comes in handy as hell, obviously, and you're going to want to do that. I mean, even if you don't get any experience or don't get any money, it's worth it, man, because you could have a skill up, you could have a chess key, or, and obviously, this is how you get new personas other than fusing personas and buying them from the condominium from the Velvet Room. And before you even go into a dungeon, obviously, you need to make sure you have money, of course, from the dungeon or wherever. And you need to buy healing items. And you definitely, from the vending machines, SP items. They respawn every single week on the vending machines. And obviously every single week on Sundays, it's the shopping network. You need to buy stuff from the shopping network. And then they send it to your house. It's once a week. Take the price stickers. Take them over to the mailbox to get new items. You need three price stickers per item extremely important obviously and another thing when you're in dungeons obviously whatever teammates that you have with you are the only teammates that will be leveling up unlike persona 5 where all the teammates level up this game only teammates in the party will be leveling up unfortunately so you need to choose your party wisely obviously throughout the entire game Yukiko is going to be your healer. You need to have her on the party. Yosuke, he kind of hits for criticals. Chie, she's kind of a physical fighter. Teddy has different abilities. Like he can heal. He has different regular magic abilities. Kanji is like your tank. You're going to obviously want him in the party. Nato has abilities like heavy attacks to all enemies, almighty damage to enemies, which is freaking useful as hell. And obviously, Rise is the tracker of the group. She gives advice to your teammates. Like, say, for instance, like, hey, the enemy has a weakness to lightning. She'll tell you that if it's already been established. And she also helps out with all out attacks. Kind of like Morgana and Fatabu in Persona 5. 
And obviously, just like Persona 5 and all the other Persona games, if the main character dies, it's game over. And this game's pretty generous compared to Persona 3, where it sends you back to your last save point. Well, in this game, you can start at the beginning of the floor, which is awesome as hell. Or say, for instance, you made a ton of mistakes and you just die on purpose so you can get better items or more experience. It'll allow you to do that. But of course, remember, don't turn off the game. Like, turn off the Vita. Or like, just put the Vita in rest mode by just pressing the power button. And then whenever you come back in, just go back into the game. Obviously, to get to the save point, you have to go through all the floors, which all the enemies will respawn. And that's a problem. And you don't want to have to go through all that again because you have a limited amount of resources. You have a limited amount of money. And you have a limited amount of time. Because Persona 4 Golden, just like Persona 5 and all the other Persona games... It's a time management game. So when you go in there, you're wasting a time slot. So waste it properly. And obviously, you don't want to get a failed game by constantly wasting time and not getting the boss of the dungeon taken care of, do you? Nope, not at all. So be prepared before you go into the dungeon, obviously. And in this game with bosses, for the most part, they really don't have elemental weaknesses. It's more about physical damage. So if you can decrease their defense, charge up your attack, and hit them with a extremely strong physical attack, then I would say go for it. Also, increase the defense of your party if possible. Almighty attacks are amazing because they really don't take into account the weaknesses and strengths of the shadows that you're fighting at all. And obviously, just like other Persona games, if a Persona has a weakness to light or darkness and the enemy strikes them with the light or darkness weakness, for the most part, your character or the Persona will instantly die. So your best bet is to not have Personas with light or dark weaknesses. Like, get that shit out of here. Obviously, like, you don't want to die during your off time whenever you're not in the dungeons, whenever you're not investigating the murders of Inaba with the Midnight Channel. You obviously need to be increasing your social stats, and you also need to be increasing your social links, a.k.a. confidants, if you're familiar with Persona 5. Because for the most part, for Persona, they used to call them social links, and that's what they call them in Persona 4 Golden. And just like Persona 5, whenever you go up to a social link, obviously you need to have the persona associated with the confidant that you're talking to. You can find this information under your menu by pressing triangle, social link stats, or before you decide to hang out with them, check social link rank. It'll tell you if the relationship is ready to deepen, what kind of arcane they are, what social link they are and what rank they are, which is extremely important because in this game, you really do need a day-to-day -day guide. I usually do the GameSpot FAQs where it'll tell you like the day-to-day -day what to do, how to respond to your social links, or whether you should go to a restaurant, because this stuff is really important. Like, you should never be going home every day. Like, no, that's a big no-no in this game. Absolutely not, because at that point, you wasted time. And if you don't get the correct social links done, you won't get extra story. You won't get an awesome ending. And who wants that? Oh, heck no. And with a guide, when you go up to a social link and their relationship is ready to strengthen, it'll tell you what options to select. And this is extremely important because if you select the correct option, it'll give you social link points, which will go towards the next social link rank. Because the more points you have, the more likely that you'll be able to increase your relationship with the social links even more next time you hang out with them instead of having to just hang out with them and burn time. You can increase the chances of hanging out with social links by hanging out with them in the evening, which I would not suggest as much. I would instead in the evening obviously read a book, you know, get a meal, do work in your room, make a model. You could also go up to the shrine and increase them through prayer. Well, obviously you want a great blessing what you need to be save spamming for that. Anything and a guy that tells you to save spam, you need to save spam. You get perks for ranking up certain social links, which is incredibly useful. Like if you increase the fox over at the shrine, like dude, you need to do that. And you're going to need a guy to do that because what the fox is is essentially you're taking people's requests from the shrine like they need help with something and 
and obviously you're not going to know what to do and I'm not going to know what to do and who the heck wants to waste their time all day trying to figure out what the heck to do. So you're going to need a guide with that one. The two social links that you need to hang out with in Persona 4 Golden to get more story is obviously Marie and Adachi. And obviously with Persona 4 Golden, just like Persona 5 and all other Persona games other than 1 and 2, of course, there's a day and night system. They're time slots, essentially. So after school, you need to decide who you're going to hang out with. And in the evening, generally, you got to decide what you're going to do, whether it's reading a book, whether it's getting something to eat, whether it's making a toy model. Time management in Persona 4 Golden is extremely important, and you need to be doing it just like Persona 5, obviously. So if you jumped into the other Persona games, you already know this for sure. So social links are obviously important in Persona 4 Golden, but social stats are extremely important as well. Without social stats, you can't say certain things to certain social links or certain characters. You won't have a high enough rank. You need to be increasing your social stats, whether that's through reading a book, whether it's working on your work table at your house, making a model at your house, doing a job, hanging out with the social link, whether it's any of those things. Like if you increase your money, hang out with a social link and increase their rank and do their social stats all in one, dude, you're freaking amazing. Like you should strive for that if possible, of course check out your guide it'll tell you what happens whenever you hang out with certain social links and their social ranks and it'll tell you if it'll increase your stats give you money obviously increase a uh, social rank what you're gonna want to do and then social ranks only go all the way up to social rank 10 and after that obviously don't hang out with your social links and of course with social links the final thing I gotta say is you can romance social links just like persona 5 but of course, don't romance more than one or else they're all going to start hating you towards Valentine's Day. Like, you don't want that. Obviously, like, get it out of here. Like, you don't want to, like, hook up with all of them. That would be ridiculous, dude. I mean, you could if you wanted to. But no, you don't want to do that. Obviously, social links are important, but also social stats are important as well they're actually extremely important because without certain ranks of social stats you can't talk to certain social links well certain ranks of social stats or you can't select certain options when you're talking to social links and different characters you can't do everything in the game without social stats now the ideal situation would be able to hang out with the social link increase their rank get money and also increase a social stat and if you check out one of the free guides on GameSpot's website for Persona 4 Golden which I would highly suggest a day-to-day -day guide for the game it will tell you in the guide before you hang out with a social link if that social link will not only rank up but also will give you money and give you social stats as well and the social stats obviously in persona 4 golden are courage knowledge expression understanding and diligence and they have five ranks each unlike the social links which have 10 ranks each you can increase social stats by reading a book hanging out with social links like i said before story moments questions in class which make sure you check out the guide in order to get the correct answer like why the heck are you guessing on this crap like for real dude get it out of here so you can study you can do different jobs with social links and also like jobs in your room on the desk which will increase social stats and give you money you can also make models there's a lot of ways to increase your social stats in Persona for Golden. Now, before I get to anything else here real quick, we're going to talk about the Velvet Room and Persona for Golden. It's pretty similar to Persona 5 and the other Persona games. You can obviously fuse Personas. You can search for certain arcane, like upgrading certain social links. You can do Persona fusions up to five Personas. You can do a normal one where you just combine them and you just get a good Persona. You can do it by levels. There's a lot of varieties when fusing personas in the Velvet Room. Also in the Velvet Room, you can read Marie's notes, which a guide will tell you that. You can also make a social link with Margaret 
and obviously make a social link with Marie like hang out with her as much as possible like get that social link max out because it is important for the story it adds more story to the game throughout the game before you go to dungeons you can talk to certain people like throughout the high school throughout the town that will give you quest if you complete the quest you will get awesome items equipment money it's extremely important to try to complete these quests. Well, obviously, for the Fox social link, you have to complete quests. And another thing that becomes kind of important, you can talk to the lady in the shop every night, and she will give you breadcrumbs, which you can use to catch fish, which fishing does pass time. And also, catching bugs does not pass time in the game. So you should do that, especially towards the Fox social link's final quest like you're going to need certain bugs to catch the guardian fish so you're going to want to do it and obviously look on the guide like when these bugs will become available and when you should be able to talk to the old man to be able to catch the sea guardian which is a quest in itself honestly but yeah bug catching does not waste time and get the timing down as best as you can because you'll catch more bugs doing that and just like the other persona games every single thing in persona 4 golden is useful believe me whether it's going to the bookstore which you can get books that will increase social stat which you should be doing also you can get books to quest to the guy right next to the bookstore you can go to the blacksmith to buy items buy equipment you can go to the lady that gives you breadcrumbs at night or during the day to get items from her healing items and obviously the vending machines are sp items and on rainy days you should try to do the mega bowl challenge because you will increase multiple stats you will increase multiple stats usually knowledge courage diligence and understanding and of course it only gives you three of those stats so you need to save spam the crap out of it obviously and make sure you're getting diligence also the hospital job if you're low on courage and you read the 100 ghost story book you can get double courage from that also don't waste your time on books that will improve your bug catching ability and your fishing ability unless you need to do it because generally it just increases the amount of fish that you can catch like it's not worth your time whatsoever check out the book hyperspeed reading which will allow you to read more than one chapter a night which can increase your social stats really fast if you're low it's kind of later in the game you may not necessarily need it and also there are books that allow you to double your social stats when you're increasing your knowledge and there's a book to also double your social stat whenever you're doing like a job on your desk which is freaking huge because not only are you getting paid you're getting double social stats which is amazing obviously in persona 4 golden pay attention to your weather in the game you can go up to the tv downstairs where nanako is the dojima residence or go up to your tv upstairs and check out the forecast it's extremely important like if you're in the point of the game where you're investigating shit and it starts raining again for a long period of time and then the rain stops the fog might come in and if the fog comes in and you didn't rescue the person out of the midnight channel dude they're gonna die and you're gonna have to reset your game 10 days like no you do not want that bad ending like get it out of here ladies and gentlemen persona 4 golden is honestly an amazing game and if you have a vita and you're not playing persona 4 golden i don't know what to tell you it's crazy man the game is 20 dollars on vita psn sometimes it goes on sale for eight dollars psn and if you decide to buy a physical cart well oh my god you're looking at anywhere from 25 dollars to 50 dollars for a game so if you're going to be playing this thing for hundreds of hours and you catch it on a sale for eight bucks like dude just get it i'm being serious like it's an amazing game it's hundreds of hours i haven't even completed the game i'm almost to the end and i'm nearly 80 hours into the game so yes there is tons of content just like persona 5 and persona 3 there's hours of content and it's wonderful that it's portable because like for me i take it to work with me all the time i get to sit down at work during my lunch and i get to enjoy persona it's amazing now yeah the game is a little older it doesn't look as good 
as Persona 5. So if you play Persona 5 and you're kind of going backwards, you may not be as impressed. Now the characters in this game compared to Persona 5, it's more of a happier experience. Like everybody's like against the Phantom Thieves, you know, in the end you're like ignorant to the Phantom Thieves. Of course, once you finish the game, obviously, you know, everything goes cool. Which I'm not going to explain that because then that would be a spoiler. But this game, it seems like for the most part, they're very cheerful towards like everybody, including you and your investigators in the Midnight Channel. Like everybody doesn't really backstab everybody. I mean, you get little hints of them kind of playing pranks on each other, but it's not like to the degree of like Persona 5 where everybody's like super negative and it's like this, like all of Tokyo or Japan's like your world reputation. You know, it's more of kind of a local thing. And generally, people don't even really know about you. You're, you're not really like a group per se that like people know about you, like the Phantom Thieves. You're kind of doing things quietly, and the cops don't even know you're doing it. Dojimo doesn't really even know you're doing it. And you're rescuing people, and people don't know that people are going to possibly die. I mean, yeah, they see people on the Midnight Channel, but they don't know that you're rescuing them uh, whatsoever. So like Persona 5 says, take your time with the game, look up guides, Look up other tips and tricks videos if you like, and enjoy Persona 4 Golden, your time in Inaba, because honestly, over these last couple months, I've been slowly playing the game. I've really been enjoying my time in Persona 4 Golden, and I'm going to probably play Royal, and then I'm going to probably play Persona 3 FES, and hey, towards the end of June, supposedly, they're going to have a big game conference about Persona games. Maybe Persona 6 might be teased? I'm hoping, and a scramble port to the west. Please, Atlas, come on. I want to play this on my PS4 and my Switch at my house in English. I don't want to have to sit there in Japanese. For real, dude. Get it out of here. Well, guys, I've been booming success, and if you've made it this far, obviously you're 20, 30 minutes into this video here, and you're enjoying this content, and you want more tips and tricks and reviews of Persona games and other games, hey, take a moment and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Now, you don't have to do it, but it will definitely show your support for the channel. It's free. It's super easy. It's simple. Also, like, leave a comment, and hit the notification bell. By doing interactions, you're showing the algorithm, in addition to watching the video, obviously, that people and you are enjoying my content, and it's going to push it to other people. And that would be freaking amazing. Because obviously you're getting something out of this. Somebody else is going to get something out of this too. It's a win-win for everybody. Well, guys, I will see you in the next video. I'm out of here.